Good evening and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today's video is going to be the first in a, uh, a fairly short series of um, videos taking an unchained flip through and comparison of uh, the history of Dungeons and Dragons through just looking at the forward passages of D&D, past and present. So this is going to be part one, where I'm focusing on the, the first four editions of Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, so Dungeons & Dragons Basic, or ODD, ODND, uh, including then Basic, and then finally the, uh, the expanded version of it, or, or uh, the BECMI, -E or BECME, as I call it, uh, from Frank Metzner. So... Uh, we're we're going to start with the original, then move on to the uh, the following three. Uh, <coughs> on another note, um, I just wanted to point out that I do in fact have uh, three of the four uh, in in box sets, uh, and I will shift views here. So uh, this is the Holmes edition. So this is the earliest edition of Dungeons and Dragons that I do own. Unfortunately, I. I do not have uh, the OD&D white box set. Uh, if ever I hit uh, the lottery, that would be one of the first purchases that I actually make. And then I follow that up with the, this is the Moldvay book, uh, uh, Moldvay Cook, sorry, uh, edition of the box set. That That's the first set that I actually personally owned uh, so it wasn't the first that I played, but it was the first that I owned. And then this is the the Frank Metzner um, edition. Um, and, and these are all the editors of the different box sets. So that's that's how they're known. Uh, so I do have I do have the physicals of all three, but I I am going to use the PDF versions uh, as I'm going through each of these. So without further ado, let's jump right into the first of the uh, grouping and let me get rid of that and make sure that I'm still queued up. Uh, yes, I am. So this here, well, my scrolling is not working right. Let's get it right. Sorry. All right. So, um, so this is the first uh, box set. And uh, this particular version is the single volume version that was uh, kind of put together. I don't know by whom. Um, as far as I know, it was never sold this way. But, uh, but this is the compilation of the three booklets into one. I think eventually there were six total booklets. I am going to skip over this particular forward because this one is is just attached to the single volume version i want to go right to the original and i will explain i expand our view here so that you can likewise read along <coughs> so the forward to the original edition once upon a time a long long ago there was a little group known as the Castle and Crusade Society. Their fantasy rules were published, and this writer's knowledge brought about much of the current interest in fantasy wargaming. For a time, the group grew and prospered, and Dave Arneson decided to begin a medieval fantasy campaign game for his active Twin Cities club. Arneson decided to be... Oh, I'm sorry. Well, from the map of the land of the great kingdom and the environments. The territory of CNC society, Dave located a nice bog wherein to nest the weird enclave of Blackmore, a spot between the great kingdom and the fearsome egg of Coot. From the chainmail fantasy rules, he drew ideas for a far more complex and exciting game and thus began a campaign which still thrives as of this writing. In due course, the news reached my ears, and the result is 
what you have in your hands at this moment. While the CMC society is no longer, its spirit lives on, and we believe that all war gamers who are interested in, medieval, in the medieval period, not just fantasy buffs, will enjoy playing Dungeons and Dragons. Its possibilities go far beyond any previous offerings anywhere. While it is possible to play a single game unrelated to any other game events past or future, it is the campaign for which these rules are designed. It is relatively simple to set up a fantasy campaign, and better still, it will cost almost nothing. In fact, you will not even need miniature figures, although their occasional employment is recommended for real uh, for real spectacle when battles are fought. A quick glance at the equipment section of this booklet will reveal just how little is required. The most extensive requirement is time. The campaign referee will have to have sufficient sorry I lost my spot will have to have sufficient time to meet the demands of his players. He will have to devote a number of hours to laying out the maps of his dungeons and upper terrain before the affair begins. The third booklet of this set will be of great help in this respect for a number of helpful suggestions regarding how to accomplish it all have been given in order to help you accomplish the task with the minimum amount of time and effort. There should there should be no want of the players, for there is unquestionably a fascination in this fantasy game, evidence, evidenced even by those who cannot, by any stretch of the imagination, be termed ardent wargamers. The longevity of this existing campaign, notably Blackmore, in the Twin Cities and Greyhawk in Lake Geneva, and the demand for these rules from people outside of these campaigns point towards a fantastic future. Tactical Studies Rules believes that all forms of wargaming fantasy will still soon become the major contender for first place. The, the section of this booklet entitled Scope will provide an idea of just how many possibilities are inherent in Dungeons and Dragons. These rules are strictly fantasy. War gamers who lack imagination, those who don't care for Burroughs' Martian adventures, where John Carter is groping through black pits who feel no thrill upon reading Howard's Conan saga, who do not enjoy the DeCamp and Pratt fantasies or Fritz Lieber's Fofford and the Grey Mouser, pitting their swords against e e evil sorceries, will not be likely to find Dungeons and Dragons to their taste. But those whose imagination know no bounds will find that these rules are the answer to their prayers. With this last bit of advice, we invite you to read and enjoy the world where the fantastic is fact and the magic really works. November 1st, 1973, E. Gary Gygax. So you have kind of the, the earliest of forwards into Dungeons and Dragons and a discussion of the rules as found here in the introduction. These rules are as complete as possible within the limitations imposed by the space. That is, they cover the major aspects of the fantasy campaigns, but still remain flexible. <coughs> as with any other rules, they are guidelines to follow in designing your own fantastic medieval campaign. They provide the framework around which you will build a game of simplicity or tremendous complexity. Your time and imagination 
are about the only limiting factors. The fascination of the game will tend to make participants find more and more time. We advise, however, that a campaign be begun slowly, following the steps outlined herein, so as to avoid becoming too bogged down with unfamiliar details at first. That way, your campaign will build naturally at a pace best suited to the referee and the players, smoothing the way for all concerned. New details can be added and old laws altered so as to provide continually new and different situations. In addition, the players themselves will interact in such a way as to make the campaign variable and unique, and this is quite desirable. If you are playing, if you're a player reading Dungeons and Dragons rules in order to improve your situation in the existing campaign, you will find that there is a great advantage in knowing what is herein. If you're a referee, I just lost my spot again, has made changes in the rules and or tables, simply note them in pencil. Who knows when some influx of the cosmos will make things shift once again and keep the rules nearby as you play. A quick check of some rule or table may bring hidden treasure or save your game's life. This book details what characters can be played, potentials, limitations, and various magical spells. It describes the beasts and creatures which will be encountered, and so on and so on. Finally, it tells you how to set up the actual order to allow the reader to gain the perspective necessary the understanding of the preceding information, read through the entire work in order to present it before you attempt to play. Okay, so there we have it. We have the 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 forward, which which is basically talking about how the game came about. All right, and um, and some of its inspirations, and then finally in the introduction here we have it discussing um, how the rules are, are really established as guidelines or a framework and how um, changes are likely to happen along the way in order to create the, the best gaming experience that you can. So, so there you have the oldest uh, portion um, uh, or forward of the um, of the inspiration and rules of Dungeons and Dragons. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take to the next step and move on to the Holmes edition and see what, if anything, has actually changed from the 1973-74 write-up and the 1977, so three to four years later, this is the next uh, edition that comes out. So here we have the Holmes edition. Now here they call it a preface. So, this book is based upon the original work published in 1974 and the three supplementary books published the, in the two-year period after the initial release of Dungeons & Dragons. It is aimed solely at introducing the reader to the concepts of fantasy role-playing and the basic play of this game. To this end, it limits itself to basics. The rules contained herein allow only the first three levels of player progression and instructions for the game's referee, the dungeon master, are kept to the minimum necessary to allow him to conduct basic games. This is absolutely necessary because the game is completely open-ended, is subject to modification, expansion, interpretation, according to the desires of the group 
participating and is in general not bounded by the conventional limitations of other types of games. This work is far more detailed and more easily understood than were the original booklets nonetheless, for with it and the other basic components of the game, any intelligent and imaginative person can speedily understand and play Dungeons and Dragons as it was meant to be played. Players who desire to go beyond the basic game are directed to the advanced Dungeons and Dragons books. And then they wish to extend their sincerest uh, thanks to the following individuals, Brian Bloom, Herney Gygax, Tim Kask, Jeff Kay, Robert Kuntz, Terry Kuntz, Alan Lucian, Steve Marsh, Mike Morn uh, Mornard, and Jim Ward. Now this here forward that you see is the reprinting of the original. And we will take a look at the introduction. And the introduction is talking about this edition for the most part. And it does not really change anything that was stated previously. Um, he had he had mentioned he had mentioned in the very beginning in the preface that um, that basically it is still meant for a ba very basic game levels one through one through three all well, the first three they they state and that um, it is subject to modification expansion and interpretation according to the desires of the group participating and is in general not bounded by the conventional limitations of other types of games. In other words, the rules, once again, are merely guidelines. So now I've taken you through the first four or so years of Dungeons and Dragons. And, and you can see so far that it's its evolution has remained somewhat consistent, although this version does elude to the upcoming advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So if you're looking for a, uh, a much more complex game, then, uh, then it, it's Eric Holmes is telling you to look forward to advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So at this point, once 1979 rolls around and Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is released, Dungeons and Dragons, the the basic sets, the box sets, continues on a parallel path along with Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So there there is a split at this point. All right, and I am going to continue with the next two editions of Dungeons and Dragons uh, and and these appear as box sets and then we will um, we will in the next video take a look at advanced Dungeons and Dragons and see if we can see that uh, that split that does take place and and compare the forward of advanced Dungeons and Dragons and the forward of uh, the Eric Holmes edition, because that's the timeline. Next up. So this is the, uh, this is the Moldvay edition. All right. So the Tom Moldvay and, uh, and, uh, David Cook. Although this edition that I have here is, is primarily Moldvay, and, and I don't have a copy of when Cook uh, stepped in um, into the role here. But here we have the foreword by 
Tom Mulvey, and let's take a look at this. I was busy rescuing the captured maiden when the dragon showed up. Fifty feet of scaled terror glared down at us with smoldering red eyes. Tendrils of smoke drifted out from between fangs larger than daggers. The dragon blocked the only exit from the cave. Sometimes I forget that D&D, Fantasy Adventures game, is a game and not a novel I'm reading or a movie I'm watching. The original D&D rules are classic. They gave the first gaming system for fantasy role-playing and, in my opinion, are still the best set of rules on the market. When I revisited the rules, I tried to maintain the spirit of the earlier rules. Those rules were written for people with a background of gaming experience. This revision was designed to be easily read and used by individuals who have never before played a role-playing game. If the half dozen years since the original rules were published, the TSR staff has answered thousands of rules questions. The answers helped find problems, uh, problem areas in those rules, areas which could either stand minor improvements or were difficult for the novice gamers to understand. This revision was aided not only by the collected game experience of TSR personnel, but by the gaming experience of the thousands of players and DMs who sent us letters in the mail. The D&D game has neither losers nor winners. It has only gamers who relish exercising their imagination. The players and the DMs share in creating adventures in fantastic lands where heroes abound and magic really works. In a sense, the D&D game has no rules, only rule suggestions. No rule is inviolate, particularly if a new or altered rule will encourage creativity and imagination. The important thing is to enjoy the adventure. I unwrapped the sword which the mysterious cleric had given me. The sword was golden tinted steel. It was, its hilt was set with a rainbow collection of precious gems. I shouted by bat my battle cry and charged. My charge caught the dragon by surprise. Its titanic jaws snapped shut. Inches from my face, I swung the golden sword with both arms. The sword blade bit into the dragon's neck and continued through to the other side. With an earth-shaking crash, the dragon dropped dead at my feet. The magic sword had saved my life and ended the reign of the dragon tyrant. The countryside was freed and I could return as a hero. Tom Moldvay 3rd of December, 1980. Let's take a look at the introduction. Here they talk about the, uh, here he talks about the number of players, at least two pl persons are needed to play this game. How to use the book. He basically covered very much the same ground as others had. The only real big difference here is um, you can see he's he's getting more into the storytelling aspect of it. And um, he basically writes, those worlds were written for people with a background of gaming experience. This revision was designed to be easily read and used by individuals who have never before played a role-playing game. Um, so he, he's kind of setting up that the, the direction that Dungeons and Dragons is going in is to open it up towards uh, not just people familiar with war gaming, as the original was, but now to bring in people who might not know nothing about wargaming and are coming into 
this hobby now, the role-playing hobby, uh, for the first time kind of fresh. He also takes a, a different bent, I think, here. Uh, and, and I'm quite surprised that it does happen kind of this early on, is that the D&D game has neither losers nor winners. It has only gamers who relish exercising their imagination. The players and the DM share in creating adventures in fantastic lands where heroes abound and the magic really works. In a sense, the D&D game has no rules, only rules suggestions. No rule is inviolate, particularly if a new or altered rule will encourage creativity and imagination. The important thing is to enjoy the adventure. So here we see the first indication where um, the story and the fun outweighs the game. All right, and, uh, and, and we'll see if this continues uh, or does it change at that, you know, beyond this point here. So here it's moving, I, I, would, I would argue, a little bit more away from the map and more towards the story of the game. Uh, you know, hard set rules, um, which were never really stated as being hard set rules, but more flexibility is being suggested here and for the purpose of uh, encouraging creativity and imagination. And we will go to the final. All right, so this is the Menser uh, basic expanded champion, uh, companion, sorry, basic expanded or expert companion. And it goes masters and then immortals. I always mess that up. Uh, let's take a look at its preface. This is a game that is fun. It helps you imagine. As you whirl around your sword ready, the huge red fire-breathing dragon swoops toward you with a roar. See, your imagination woke up already. Now imagine this game may be more fun than any other game you have ever played. Dungeons and Dragons is a game. Dungeons and Dragons game. The dungeon. Ah, can't read right now. The Dungeons and Dragons game is the way for us to imagine together, like watching the same movie or reading the same book. But you can write the stories without putting a word on paper, just by playing the D and D game. You, along with your friends, will create a great fantasy story. You will put it away after each game and go back to school or to work. But like a book, the adventure will wait. It's better than a book, though. It will keep on going as long as you like. It is nearly the most popular game ever made, and you will see why in just a bit. When you bought some other game or book, did you ever think, gee, that's nice, but it's not quite what I thought it would be? Well, your D&D adventures will be just what you want because you're the one making them up. And it's not hard. It takes a little reading and a little thinking, but most of all, it's fun. It's fun when you discover that nobody loses and everybody wins. In fact, when you get good at the game, for example, knowing what to expect in a kobold cave and which dragons are on your side. You don't have to put in a coin each time. Like many other games, once you have these rules, you don't need anything else. There's more, of course. If you want it, if you want it, exciting adventures to play, miniature figures, of monsters and characters, expert rules for more experienced players, and lots more. But you can already have everything you need to start this package and your imagination will do it. Ah yes, it does, does cost one more thing, which you have right now, a bit of time. 
It takes a few minutes to learn the basic rules and another hour or two to play a full game. You will probably want to spend more time and might even make it a hobby millions of people have. But for now, just sit back and imagine. All right, and he goes on with the remainder of his story there and basically tells you to have fun. How to use the book, the acknowledgements. Let's see if we have a... We have some uh, descriptions of what is role-playing, what is a dungeon. Your first adventure, being poisoned. So, so this book here has a little bit less of an introduction into the game theory of it. And uh, it's basically assuming that you've done that already. You've read about this already. And this is just a, um, this is just a, a more compiled, uh, you know, vision of the rules, all right? That it's, uh, you know, it will take you through the basic and then move you on to the more uh, expert uh, and or, um, you know, the more advanced versions of the game. So as we saw in the in the fourth, the fourth uh, edition of this, all right. So that's that's this one here. So as of the fourth edition of this, um, you don't really see a, a change in philosophy of gaming uh, from what was written in the Moldvay or the the Holmes. Uh, Moldvay was the first one that kind of focused on storytelling as opposed to uh, where Holmes was, was was talking more about, you know, rules, flexibility, and such. But, but even in the od and you know, Gygax forward, it was also talking about that flexibility as well. So, um, listen, I, I know this has gone on for, you know, quite some time, and, uh, you know, I, I was, I, I'm glad I did not try to tackle and including the next couple of editions. So what I will do is I will take a look at uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons first edition and compare it to its contemporary at the time because like I said, it, it made that parallel split um, with D&D &D when it went to AD&D. &D. Between Holmes and Moldvay, that's when it made that switch. So I'm going to compare Moldvay with first edition a D and D, and then I will take a look at um, second edition A D and D at the same time, uh, because then after second edition A D and D, as you all probably know, then it goes back to D and D third edition, um, three point five, and then fourth, and then fifth edition. So I will probably take care of these now in uh, in just two edition uh, segments you know, combined up, uh, so a total of uh, three or four videos at most uh, in this series. So once again, thanks for joining. Um, you know, thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, commenting and, uh, and requesting this series of videos. I hope that it, it kind of answered any questions that you have. Uh, but if you still have others that you want uh, that you want me to take a look at, you know, I, I'll gladly take a look at those and uh, possibly begin with that in the uh, in the next edition of this uh, of this series. Uh, once again, uh, the, the close of another weekend, so I hope you enjoyed your weekend. Uh, look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon. Remember to be safe out there, and uh, and be on the lookout for more videos coming on on either this channel or some uh, other channels that just channel um, has as featured, you know, other channels. So there's a lot of other channels that I do follow and uh, just did a, a, a long appearance uh, this, this afternoon with, uh, with Legion of Myth. So I, I look forward to, uh, you know, hearing your commentary about that, looking at their, uh, their YouTube channel. 
uh, to see how, you know, what you thought about that, where we kind of delved as a panel into uh, the OSR and what the OSR means. And, uh, and this, according to my definition, is old school revival. You're going back and you're playing the original older versions of whatever game you happen to be playing, whether it's, it's Dungeons and Dragons or first edition or second edition villains and vigilantes or Star Frontiers or Marvel superheroes from TSR. So any of the older games that you're going back to, that's part of the OSR if you believe in what the uh, OSR stands for as far as old school revival, reviving the old games that uh, some of us grew up playing with, or some of you, you might not know how the current game that you are playing, where it started from, where, where its roots are at. And so it's, it's always a great, uh, great deal of fun as a DM to bring players to the original versions of these games, uh, especially if their only context of role playing is more modern games. So to bring them back to those older editions is is a lot of fun uh, to do as a uh, as an experienced GM. It's one of the things that I enjoy most as being a uh, a dungeon master or a game master is to bring players to these older editions of games. So once again, thanks for joining. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Well, hard to talk today. It was a four-hour uh, video session uh, in the afternoon, and, and now a video that's probably run about 40 or so minutes. So once again, thanks for joining, and take care.